Today I'm going to be installing this Zoje plane sewer into the stand you can see over here that I've already built up. If you'd like to know what's involved in uh, building one of these stands, uh, take a look at uh, my video. I'll link it up up here somewhere and it goes through assembling the stand ready to accept the machine head. So this is slightly different though to the uh, cover seamer table. So this one's specifically designed for a plain sewer. And here we have uh, down here the machine head. We've got the suave looking uh, gentleman there on the packaging. So let's unpack the machine head and I'll show you what's involved in putting the machine head into the table there. So I'm here in the garage again. Uh, you might hear a little bit of rain and whatnot. Uh, not very well sound insulated. Unfortunately my camera that I normally record with has uh, broken down. So I've got another little camera which will not accept the little lapel wireless microphone so you may find that when I'm away from the camera it may not sound so good. But to be honest I wasn't overly impressed with the little lapel microphone either. Uh, if you've watched some of the previous videos you would have heard the hiss that it introduced which I wasn't overly happy with. So I'm going to make the most of what I've got. Okay normally you wouldn't get this with the machine. This is a uh, a ruled throat plate that was supplied uh, because my, my customer requested it so you wouldn't normally get that set in this machine here. Got a box of goodies here. Let's see what we have. Okay in the box here we've got the uh, parts book operation manual. We have a uh, that's the speed controller. It's a direct drive motor so the motor is built into the sewing machine itself. Uh, that's the speed controller for it. Attaches to the foot pedal thread stand, knee lifter, power cable, some rubber mounts and hinges, screws, etc. Tools and bits and pieces: spare needles, spare bobbins. Got a bottle of oil, dust cover. the oil pan and the pitman rod. I'll get someone to give me a hand to lift the machine out. I, I don't want to risk, you know, doing my back in or anything like that. So yeah, these machines are fairly heavy. So what I'll do though, first of all, is we'll, before I unpack that, let's get the rest of the table there set up and ready to accept the machine head. There's the oil sump there. There's a hole here for this here to go down through and then the uh, knee lever attaches to this here and pushes up this here to uh, lift the presser foot and we've got this magnet here that sits down and catches any you know very fine um, metal or pins and things like that. The sump itself sits down in here but first of all these rubber um, corner pieces here so these here just sit in like that these are the hinge mounts and the hinges here these pins here go into the back of the base of the machine so that you can uh, tilt the machine back for you know maintenance and cleaning things like that oil refilling bits and pieces like that and they sit down in here just like that and then the sump just sits down into the table just like that there put the magnet in this here and then we're ready to fill the sump there with oil go ahead and do that 
and we fill the oil to between these two marks but preferably the high mark there just like that we've got a little bit to spare there so this part is ready to accept the machine head when I place the machine head I'll be first of all placing these hinges in the back of the base of the machine head and then I'll set the machine head into position here I'll also go ahead and install the uh, speed controller there that just mounts up under the table if you want more detail on how to fit these parts here the likes of the pitman rod for the uh, pedal and this uh, speed controller take a look at uh, my previous video I think it's two videos back where I install a cover seamer machine into a table that shows in more detail the uh, uh, the process of you know fitting this and lining it up things like that I'll assemble the thread stand there uh, again for more detailed instructions on that take a look at the uh, previous video on installing the ZOJ cover seam machine where I go through the details of uh, assembling the thread stand there. This uh, little post here is to sit in the back in that hole there. That's the rest for when you tip the machine head back it rests on this here. Yeah, I've also got some tacks here so I'll be tacking in these four corner rubbers here. We've got some cable clips there mounting screws for the uh, speed controller. So that's the speed controller mounted to the underside of the table. Uh, the pitman rod connected here and the power cable cable tidied to the underside and the cable there for the speed controller also cable tidied there we have put the machine head into the table there with its hinges both installed there the thread stand is all assembled set to go there and now it's just a matter of connecting the that's the power cable so that can only go one way that's the blue plug into the blue socket there just like that and the speed controller plug there into the socket there again that can only go one way and clips in and you can see that the machine can tip back just like that there so let's take a look at the machine from the operator's point of view. Let's swing this around. It's just the quality inspection certificate there. But normally I would attach the knee lever for press of foot lifting there. Let's just have a quick look at the manual here. There's a little uh, pamphlet for the uh, controller here that just goes through some of the uh, settings and options that you can uh, achieve through this control panel here I'm not going to go into too much detail today with this the little operations manual parts book parts diagrams there so one side we've got parts diagram and the other side uh, instructions shows you a little bit about Installing the machine here shows you installing the sump, filling with oil, thread stand, a few little tips about threading, needles, foot lifting. Yeah, just basic operation of the machine here. Pretty straightforward, but uh, quite concise and clear there. Power switch on the back, on the top of the back of the machine here. Turn it on and we've got a display of all threes now that is referring to the back tack stitches so this machine uh, by default will do three stitches forward three back and then you you know put your foot down do your seam and then when you back heel it will do three stitches back three forward so that's the back uh, tack you can increase and decrease each one of these individually to suit what sort of back tack you'd like to do pretty um, pretty straightforward there's a little trimmer icon there that'll be referring to the trimmer is turned on the uh, we've got the 
a B, which is your start back tack. So the start back tack will go three forward, that's A, three back, which is B. Then you do your seam, and then three is C, which will be at the end of the seam, will go three back, and then three forward for D. And these are labeled A, B, C, and D. We've got uh, the so the default uh, looks like is needle down. Whenever the machine stops, the machine will always position in the down position. And we've got some um, toggle switches here for turning on the back tacking, uh, turning it off, and ramp up speeds, turning the trimmer off and on, and some other bits and pieces that might be the needle up and down position. Yeah, so but I'm not going to go too far into that at this stage, but um, it's quite a nice little control panel there. So we've got stitch length here, so you would turn that clockwise to bring your stitch length down, and anti-clockwise to increase stitch length, and you've got from zero right through to five there for stitch length. We've got the little uh, sight glass for checking the oil pumping, so that will show you if there's any issues with the oil delivery system, the automatic oiling. So these machines um, run in a sump of oil as you saw and the oil's pumped up and through the machine so you don't have to oil anything manually. And this sight glass tells you or shows you if the oil system is pumping properly. The oil actually gets pumped to the underside of this little sight glass. So if you don't see the oil uh, pumping it's a little bit like the oil light in your car coming on. It's uh, not a good sign. We have a uh, built-in bobbin winder here and your thread tensioning system. That'll be your, that's your bobbin winder tensioner there. Oh, that, by the way, this here is the presser foot uh, pressure adjustment here. So this does the amount of pressure down on the presser foot there. If we tip it back, I'll just turn it off. Just tip the machine back there. And you can see here we've got the oil bath. We've got a couple of um, big solenoids here. One will be for reversing, one will be for uh, trimming. And your bobbin case with a bobbin installed. So that's all set to go. This is the oil pump with a little filter here. And um, a little wick here for soaking up oil to deliver into some of these other bearings here. Okay, put that back down. I'll go ahead and install the uh, knee lever. This is for the presser foot lifter. Let's install that. So this here will be adjusted to suit the operator. So here we have knee lever, presser foot there. I'll be threading this uh, domestic sewing machine thread here. Uh, normally you would use like industrial cones, the bigger cones on here, but that's, this is what I have at hand at the moment. So thread through the top loop there and we'll start by winding a bobbin. So we'll thread the bobbin winder tensioner there, come across to the bobbin winder and we'll just uh, wrap that thread around several times there and engage the bobbin winder. Now with an industrial machine you can wind a bobbin while you're sewing and so in which case I've made sure that the uh, presser foot is in the up position so that the feed dogs don't wear on the underside of the uh, presser foot there. So now we're ready to start winding. And also we're looking for oil coming up through here to be pumped through here. So that, that can take a little while for it to start pumping when the machine's um, straight out of the box like this. There's the, the bobbin wound there. And then we'll... Um, We'll use the same thread here to thread the needle. 
in a normal working environment you would have a spool of thread here for winding the bobbin uh, and you'd have one here for you know your needle thread so that you can uh, be sewing and the bobbin will be winding and when the bobbin's full obviously the automatic stopper here engages to you know stop the bobbin from winding thread the machine here I won't go too far through, you know, into threading and, and whatnot in this video. This is really just to show you this uh, little ZoJ plane sewer. And I'll just back heel here on the treadle. Does the back attack, trimming and needle positioning there. And we thread from left to right here. Sometimes I find these guards to make it a little bit difficult to thread the needle just because um, working from around a camera as well doesn't really help things. Just like that there. Press foot down. And we'll do a quick seam down here. So when I uh, back heel, it'll do the end back stitch and trim that. I'm lifting the foot by hand because I can't reach the uh, knee lever from um, beside the camera here. So when we start off again, I uh, hit, the, hit the treadle, it'll do its start back tack. You do your seam and you'll notice the needle's always stopping in the down position there. So when you want to turn a corner, it's all set for you to do so. And then once you've finished the seam, heel back again to do the end back tack and the trimming. So that's about it for this one. Just a um, reasonably quick video to show you quickly uh, what the ZoJ ZJ7000E plane sewer, automatic plane sewer, is all about. I hope you found that interesting and I thank you very much for watching.